alliances turn to ban. <clears throat> Alliances turn to ban. Hello, everybody, and welcome, welcome back to the Captain's Draft 3.0 group stages presented by Dota Cinema and Moonduck TV. We, we are here with Alliance vs. Virtus Pro game, game number two. two. On Moonduck TV. TV, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. My name is Vaughn. Joining me today, of course, is Pit Muckle doing Observing and Producing. We have, of course, Grant Grant joining us as my co copter as well as Zyori here for a bit for the draft. Guys, how are you doing? Hello. Zyori, let's start with you. Dude, we're good, Mott. We're pumped up. That first game while you were chasing Lassie around in the park was awesome. It was action-packed. It was 50 minutes of back and forth. And it was a slugfest, man. It was really even until the end. Ake played an insane Keeper of the Light with blinding lights that were just on a whole nother level. It was a fun game, man. Yeah. Dude, Ake should be in the new zoo. He's gorgeous. Ten. Witch oh, yeah. Blue Seal. Virtus pros we are ready. Both both teams are quick. The quick push heroes. Game hero. Wow, Alliance picking Chen. Who would have thought? Ake. Well, you know that's he's uh, okay on that hero from what I've heard. He actually could play that, you know, rather well. And then Witch Shark comes out too, so that's pretty solid. I think he's played it before. Yeah, I think so. Who would you actually get if you have to be biased? And do you like more Ake's or Pup? Uh, probably Ake's, in my opinion. But I don't know, actually. It's that's a tough. I don't that's know. very like, tough, actually. actually. I don't know. You if get I to that, that level no, of of skill. I don't know how you start differentiating which one's better. Yeah, you know, like they're just they're both so masterful with the hero. Yeah, that's tough. Then you have to add another guy. Beat is and <laughs> shout to <laughs> EG. EG Beat is. He's the <laughs> homie. He knows how to play Chen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he doesn't even know how to play Dota anymore, honestly. He CP looking forever. at here. I think they're going to take a Visage for Lil, probably. I hope. I, I think hope it didn't pick. get banned out. You know, Vis Visage and Night Stalkers. Right now, or Tusk. Uh, yeah. Tusk, yeah. I yeah. really like Night Stalker. Night Stalker's really good. I've seen a lot of him lately. Offlane and mostly support. Yeah. Uh, what are we thinking about as mid laters here? I guess there's an Ember Spirit, there's a TA. What else? Mag, I guess, to a certain extent. Tiny, of course, which Alliance have played a lot of Tiny, Tiny recently, so I've been uh, liking the fact that S4 has been grabbing that hero a lot. I, I really like the TA here. There's not that much to deal with her in the mid lane. Yeah, I think Pana is decent, especially if teams are going to get lineups we've seen. We did see a G Skywrath Mage last game, Mott. They didn't win with it, I but saw. They, they did pick it, so I guess potentially in the cards. There's actually a lot of mid heroes. Got a, a magnetar, El Tiny again. Yeah, mm -hmm. get to see how pick it first. Hey, do you I'm it or we until the last one. Tusk Axe. Ooh, Tusk Axe oh. gonna come out. That's pretty oh, interesting. It's a lot of aggression. We'll see how they play at the axe. Probably in the offlane more than likely. I think that'll be the offlane Tusk Axe. It's like a Tusk. Yeah, I'm surprised. The, I, the Tusk, oh, I, I would Lord. guess, but the Axe is very interesting. Now we'll see the S4 Tiny probably again, and the Warlock. So two heroes they played last go-around. Yeah, they have even more... Er, they have better early game and... Lion so Might be even a... Man, this is... It, it worked pretty well last game. I don't see why not. Why you pick, well, you don't pick the Warlock and the Tiny. Like, these are... Two heroes they very, very, very much love. I think they've played these heroes a couple of times here at Captain's Draft. I'm pretty sure they played it once before this series. I was able to see a little bit of the game last last game, and boy, they, they played pretty damn well with the Tiny and the Warlock. But there it is, the Night Stalker and the Visage. Oh, yeah. You're both right. You both got it correct for Brody's Pro. Man, this is... I, I don't know if VP will win this one, but this is a very VP draft. I'm excited to see them try to execute with this. There is gonna This is going to be a slugfest, I think, no doubt. So who who's mid, though? The Lone Druid, potentially? I'm, I'm yeah. not sure. This maybe it'll be a visage mid. It could be a core visage here. Grant, what do you think? Oh hey, Grant here. Uh, I be a core visage. Doubt it. Yeah, <clears throat> Harry Axe. 
uh, Fear used to play TI3, TI4. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can play a kind of like like a safe lane centaur or brewmaster, just secure him a really fast blink dagger vanguard, then you can start moving around like, you know, 10, 15 minutes in. It's possible. Yeah, and especially versus Chen, Witch Dog. In the back, kind of supports are huge. Silent Axe, G Lone Druid. What is Lodo going to pick, though, for Alliance? It feels like they still need a Lodo here. There's a couple of good carries up and available. I'm not sure he plays a lot of them, though. Klinx is available if he wants it. Ember Spirit safe lane. Reiki, Legion, Kunkka. Eh, not really Kunkka, but... Slark. Kunkka. Bugna! Ooh! Yeah. Push strat is strong from Alliance. In fact, both teams have good push. I have to give the edge, though, to Alliance with the push strategy coming out. Grant, what do you think? Yeah, they. I think they have the... Uh, it depends running at them or with the tusk and a night stalker even uh, you just that's what you want out of the laning phase experience with that and really tough to stop yeah this is gonna be a great draft hockey's on the chin no surprise there bulldog alliance is warlock player and now we'll see what vp are gonna grab up here who's gonna be playing the axe who's gonna be playing the lone druid what's g going to be playing uh, with this draft, uh, Andrew, what do you think? Who, who's going to take this one? I, I think this game is basically on the axe from the Virtus Pro perspective. I have, It looks like it's going to be a G axe. GX, okay, wow. cool. I think if the axe has Five a good start remaining. and gets some momentum, he's going to be really important in fending off these mid-game pushes when they're all grouped up. And I think a, a farmed axe will bode well for VP. But if he doesn't get a good start, if they rotate on him a lot and he gets shut down, this game is going to be really hard for VP. That's my guess. Well, we're going to jump into the game. Alliance versus VP. Game number two. Alliance with a 1-0 advantage currently. They're going to send Aki towards mid. They're even going to drop down an Observer Ward immediately up onto their high ground just so they have vision. I, I'm not sure how I feel about the Axe versus S4 Tiny matchup, mid. I feel like S4 can actually do a great job there. What do you think about that matchup, Grant? It's... God. Tiny's base. Yeah. Mass, especially which talked to behind him, it's I, I always like tiny in the mid lane. Always favored. Person X. G's going to have to deal with some early game damage. Hopefully he can dodge all the combos coming up from the tiny. I'm not sure if that's going to be the case, but... Um... VP really looking at standings right now. VP needs... 30 seconds mm -hmm. to battle. They... Oh, and they put a sentry. Wow, that's sick. Yeah, that's actually a waste of a sentry. That's a mind game. Good catch, JJ. It's really impressive. Top rune spot, though. Uh-oh, Lotus gonna get caught. The ice shards, however, will not stop him from going even further back into his side of the river. However, the cast will bounce through. There's gonna be the avalanche coming out. They get the nether blast off. Can they get FNG? Last right click. S4 will get the first blood. They don't get the bounty room, but still, I'm pretty sure he's a lot happier with that as he gets up his bounty, or rather his bottle now. Exactly what happened last game. V got both bounty runes, and then Alliance gets a first immediately afterwards. That's nuts. There we go, yep, the dual lane from Tiny Witch. Oh my god. It's so hard for G. He has established it now, no ring of protection for maybe a trade, later the cast will fly through, Avalanche is up and ready to go. Can they get this kill? He's tanky. He's not that tanky, though. They need one more right click. Good fairy fire. Last one will go. And it's going to bring him down to 18 HP. That very far saves his life. He, he got two stout shield, three of Witch Doctor's attacks, or he would have died. And uh -oh. that's more They're looking for him, but they actually just can't catch him, even with the ice shards. They needed snowball, they needed call, they needed extra move speed for the axe, and that's just not the case. And S4, he'll regen up with his south as well. So a lot of battling going on in this mid lane currently, but we'll have to keep our eyes on the other lanes as well. Yeah, we'll see if an Orb of Venom. We haven't seen Orb of Venom on Spirit Bear in a while. Yeah. Well, I could be really good. Hey, I think... I think he should go for it. We'll wait and see. We'll see if he goes for the Iron Talon. Maybe even picks up a... Probably a Midas. It's like almost every team picks up Midas. I think they're... A lot of people have told me they're really interested in seeing Iron Talon into Radiance. But, like, it never happens. It's always the Midas first. And I'm not sure what you think about that, it, though. The Midas? Like, usually it's just for the... The... I mean, the... Passive... Power so fast, even True. early. Yeah. Attack speed that you get from that. Pretty damn nice. We'll see if he goes for that later on down the road. I imagine he will. There's pretty much a 90% chance. Okay, he's level 2 now. He's gotten a couple of last hits. Meanwhile, there's going to be an avalanche here as G was getting close to S4. S4 has his bottle. G's, I think, got his coming out now. In fact, he does. 
And uh, we'll see if Aki goes for a smoke cake here relatively soon as he's picked up a standard tormentor. And he's looking to continue to jungle. This is it's looking a lot like last game, except Aki's in the jungle getting more. It's an interesting early game. Both teams walk on each other. Hit lane. They might do so. He's going to throw out an early heal. He's going to get the ice shards coming out his way, but he actually avoids it. So he doesn't take that damage, nor does it block him off. He'll be able to walk back. This is crazy. You're a warlock at a tri lane, and somehow you're a, a warlock against a tri lane, rather, and somehow you're surviving. It's pretty nuts that you could do that, but... And, I mean, he's got the boot, fear bear, the outruns the little he does of the orb. Here we go, mid rotation coming out, Ake is looking for the gank. He's got a dark troll with the ensnare and the state of torment with the shockwave. They're gonna come through avalanche, Toss is about to fly, they get the ensnare up as well. This should be a pretty easy kill. G about to just try to get away, but he can't do it. He's too low, and Ake will provide enough damage between him and his creeps to get the kill. S4 is a little bit low, but they still pick up the kill nonetheless. Yep, and S4's, uh, walking fairings. Oh god, it is three minutes now, it's about to get, uh, upgraded here in a moment, and then he'll be able to bring it back pretty quick. 2013 Lockjaw, that's a standard dollar special. Is that TI3? That's, I... 2013. Yeah. I remember that, that was an insane courier. <laughs> oh, they get the courier, though, they get it, somehow. S4... That's... Damage from spin just gets it. Now it's force on the lock. Oh, he's getting ganked from. G is going to come through. There's going to be the ensnare. He's going to get tossed back. That will be the kill. And so he gets the courier, but he does die for it. That's still pretty good for his team. Pretty damn good, even. It's going to give them some extra farm. Silence up to, what, 500 gold now with his gloves of haste. He'll start working on getting towards that Midas. And it looks like he's not going to be going for the Iron Talon. But this mid lane has been a disaster, Graham. Like, he's died three times. Actually, it's yeah. only twice, but it feels like it's been three times. It feels like, I mean, you're like, oh, yeah, Axe will do great versus Tiny. They're both melee, and then you just, the Witch Doctor waves just a and everything, and then you have the end smoke gang. Yeah. Actually, win TI. <laughs> Not a 5v5 game. Oh. Uh. Lil's got a double damage route. Meanwhile, top player is going to use the Nether Blast Toss. He's going to go with the Avalanche combo to DK Phobos. He's pretty speedy. It is nighttime, and he will make it away with his boots. And uh, Lil was chasing after somebody else, and I think it was Bulldog who was able to middle. get him. Ooh, they'll find a kill. Ice Shards will fly through. G will get up the Berserker's Call, and they'll be able to take down at least EGM. That's not the target they wanted, but still, it's good for them. And Aki continues to go back to jungle and go to work. Hopefully, hopefully FNG. 12 minutes. Game, he had a rough game. Bottom one. Yeah. Left Bulldog actually had a could go down. He's level three. He's only got level two heal. There's gonna be soul substance. Right click will fly. He's tanky. Meanwhile, Lil will just die to the tower as EGM was going to work with the right click. Mid was about to get caught. As for of course the Berserker's call, or rather the battle hunger came out from G. It's a lot of action all across the map, and we're we're waiting for that first oh, net on mid. There's gonna be the net being scared. The avalanche will go three. Gets off. The call on S4 was actually hit by it, so he can't chase it any further. It's not. He didn't really matter. He didn't matter. He didn't get off a good toss anyways. He's always just crazy team to watch. Virtuous pro player. This, they they have a lot of good run at you style. We used to see a ton of spirit breaker for them. This is kind of a similar style where they're they're they have a night stalker so they can rotate him mid. They have obviously G. They want to get a quick blink dagger for him, but that's probably not going to happen. He's actually up to 625 gold. He's got 33 last hits. He's done a great job. He's dying at 15. It's just that he's died a couple of times. It's really the biggest issue, I think, Grant. Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're going to die, at least do. Worth less, you lose less, and yeah, model tranquil stout and six. Please, he's doing decently mid. Yeah, he's got level six now. He's actually ahead of experience for S4 somehow. They're looking to train. Yeah, here it comes, Loda, and everybody is ready to go. The call will fly. G might have stayed a little too long, but the rest of his team is coming as well. We're gonna see a huge team fight. G in trouble. Nether blast will fly. The ensnare comes out. They decrypt him as well. He's low. They finally get off the life drain on top of that, and he somehow barely survives for like a minute. It feels like an FNG has been caught out as well. He came at the wrong time. He's gonna run behind the tower. They're gonna try to converge on him and stop him from getting there. He drops up the frozen sigil. Lotus gonna come in with another decrypt to slow him down. They have avalanche toss. Gets off the snowball. There's gonna be the toss coming through. Avalanche not gonna be needed as the nether blast goes in after the decrypt. And Alliance will pick up two there. Just we won out of skank from all. Now they have three creep. They can they can push mid. I'm surprised they're actually not. Maybe he's background, but G is here. And another blast spit dropped as well. Lotus taking some tower hits though. 
seven of them. Yeah, he's very squishy. Ice Shark will catch up to him as well. He's in some trouble. The Snowball will fly. But great Avalanche Toss will go as well. And Lotus even put in further. Great spin. It's level four spin. That's able to take down his squishy Pug. Now, it's there coming through, but they haven't brought him down yet. As Diki Phobos and Lil come in, they're looking for Akka. They didn't get the Void off. Diki Phobos doesn't have the mana to use it, so they will back away. They've already lost the Pug, man. The Battle Hunger is going to go onto his center conqueror. DK Fobos just runs up to the high ground, which was, I think was a little bit optimistic, but he will not get punished for it. That was uh, interesting, to say the least. Yeah, the S4 tossing. I think Lodu can S4. Like, get in there, bud. That's Legend. Uh, <laughs> S4 was just like, I want this kill. I was like, no, 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 no. That's not great. He'll go down. Uh, back down bottom, a rotation coming in from Ake with the ensnare. They're looking to find Silent. As he's been unganked the entire game, he's level 7. He doesn't have his Midas. He actually bought something. He's actually got... No, he does have the Midas. Okay, there it is. Oh, the chicken? The courier? Last right click in Ake. Get it? Radiant yes. Nicely done. Courier's dying both sides in the early game. What a crazy game so far. But luckily, he got his Midas. The courier died. Oh, that God. That would actually be so game-changing. Devastating. He... Stone ball. Now Lotus fine, maybe Ice Shards come out, Decrep goes through, Life Drain as well. Look at that damage, and DK Fumble is like, I have to get it. Oh, what a toss! Quarterback, S4, throws it downfield the Hail Mary, and he finds it. Jeez, S4's just tossing Lota all around. This time it pays off for him. Lota gave him permission that time. He's like, hey, you can do it. I want that kill. Nicely done. That was fun to watch. And they're going to take the Zero Tower because of it. This push is coming out of lines. They, they are not kidding around, man. Radiance Only they got that push out of Chen. Who would have guessed the top tower with that? I'll dig that. Pugna, though. He's pretty good. But this is something they, they still have to worry about. The lone druid. As he's getting more and more farmed. They're still sitting top. They're like, oh, we put the tower. They think we were back. Oh, he's going to toss him a second. Oh, my lord. Since our conqueror's top goes after the toss, the avalanche, the cast. Uh, this is very cheeky stuff. It's like you have so little time to react. Like if you you snowball, if you see Radiant's flying in, but <laughs> he would send flying. He would... just imagine seeing a flying sensor come at you. Uh, just like like oh my god, what's happening, dude? All this power. Yeah. Oh my goodness. They destroyed Radiant's this thing. Awesome. Nether blast, a couple of sensors, a couple of other creeps, wild wings, haters. It actually is in not deny range yet. The catapult Dude. will go to work, and I think it might get there or get close to it. In lane, S4 was going to get caught by G, but he's actually up to 1900. G is just doing as best as he can, honestly. This has been a great early game for Alliance, but G is still somehow getting back into it. And, like, he's almost up to his blank dagger now. The only problem is there are five man. Five of them? Not really, no. You're going to call them, and you're... Rex doesn't have the best surprise with that armor. Here we go. Snowball's going to fly through. F and G will look for EGM. He's actually going to get sent back by Ake's test of fate. And it looks like he will be able to get away. The cast will fly through. Here comes Lota. Drops down the nether ward. G's going to get decrept up as well. Nether blast will fly into the tower, but that's it. Meanwhile, the top tier 2 is in deny range, I believe. Let me check real quick. The answer to that question is yes, it is. All right. I'm trying to think. Why did Lota... I'm not sure. Maybe the he wants the extra move, sp move speed or slow speed rather. It's ten percent is nice, I think. Yes. Cooldown is also reduced a little bit. I don't know. There's probably a couple of reasons why. But Axe will have his bank. I think this he can get the cops on like a Chen or dog. Then it'll be good. But if they do start fighting, Axe is almost bad. Yeah. I mean, he's gonna have to have some backup, like. Night Stalker and the Tusk are going to have to get in there. They're going to have to have familiar drops. The familiar drops, I think, might be the most important part of the fight to save him. There's going to be a toss sensor Cocker in again. He actually misses the stomp. He actually had just enough reaction time for G to move out and away. His blink is done. It's going to fly out as the courier has respawned. Familiars are nearby helping it get back to the base. There was a ward there to spot it out, but they weren't going to be able to get to the high ground and kill the, the courier. So, all right. Radiance Biney getting close to it. Well, about one camp off after that one. 
And, uh, well, Alliance, all this is happening. They're going to go for a Necro book, surprisingly, on Bulldog, and take down the Tier 1 Tower as well in that bottom lane. So all the Tier 1's dead. Virtus Pro still looking for their first one. Silence getting closer and closer to the Relic. He's a couple, he's like a 1,800 away, but still, he'll try to get some extra money by taking his Tier 1 Tower down. But if they do, they might lose the Tier 2 Tower bottom. We'll see if they can get in and defend, or if they just want to trade. After Alliance was laning phase, is the biggest thing. Like, either team... Power push it. There, Chen. Mm -hmm. Now the line's done that. They can just take these tier two. Now the tier two about to fall bottom lane. Speaking of tier two, the push is going to come out from Virtus Pro, but I think Alliance could probably continue to push bottom or either TP up and try to defend, either of which are fine. Wait, have we seen Rock yet? No, it's not been dropped. I, he hasn't been level six for the longest time. He just got it a little bit ago, so he's got it now. I'm going to go push this. base there. Yeah, they've got Loda. They've got a huge Chen army. They've got some good right click. They have S4 with toss damage as well to hit up on the tower. And speaking of toss, they blink in. That is the reveal of the blink dagger. S4 gets a dominating spree. Effigy is deleted from the game. They'll take the top tier two tower, but Virtus Pro, they need to defend this base. The tier three is about to fall already. They get the cliff off. There's going to be the void on the S4. Calls up on EGM. They'll, they'll try to bring him to the base, but EGM's not going to go very far. There's going to be the darkness popped as well. The ice shards will fly through. This melee rack's in trouble. The Virtus Pro looking for a defense here. They even get off. Call coming through, but they missed it. They all back away. Now the toss that was in. They'll find the kill on the FNG again. Death will reply. G's about to go down. He's so low. Alliance is pushing base in 13 minutes, and they're being successful at it. They might back up and get ready to go again. They've got another nether blast, but they don't have the mana for it for another 10 seconds or so. Meanwhile, though, they still have all these chain creeps going to work. Both of our axes are very low. They're about to lose the spirit bear as well. And Alliance might decide to back here momentarily. They still have the rock, though. That's why, like, a VP knows. Rocket, we can't. Bulldog's about to drop it, but he gets the call off instead. Now this is void up, but they still haven't taken down Bulldog. There's the rock coming out in G. Tossed up, upheaval down. Rax is gone, and S4 is gonna try to get out now. They've gotten everything. The void will come through. Hand of God's gonna fly. They haven't sent him back yet. He's just gonna toss back, and they actually get the kill on the F and G with the golem again, just causing havoc in the back lines. Virtus Pro have only gotten three kills this game, and it looks like that's all they might get. They're gonna try to chase down a couple of heroes here, but another blink in, toss the avalanche combo. Everybody's low, silent gets life for to death. G will be next, the right clicking the goal will do the job, and Bulldog will get a double kill. DK Fomo's getting chased down. There's another blast, Loda picks up a double kill for himself as well. Three dead for Virtus Pro, they have buyback on silent, but that is a full set of racks gone. And if they didn't have that tier two mid, they would have taken another set of racks, almost certainly. Yeah, that's, they're just, Alliance just, I, I don't know. Last, what, month now, they just, they just looked insane. Yeah, they've looked really good. They've looked think, really good. When was their last loss? I think Secret? I don't know what turn. Game. Let me check, now that you guys asked that question. Toss coming out though, and well, they're just trying to push at this point again. And there's no way that they can defend on VP side. They don't have everybody up yet, and they're gonna get ready to go here momentarily. It's but, like uh, no mana, so oh, and a veil on wit. Yeah, this is an insane start for Alliance, and I'd be very surprised to see uh, VP get back into this game. I think the funny, it's kind of it was, um, but now when you're running tiny with Pug, us used to be. But now that it's magical, that one's kind of pointless. It's actually pretty buff when you're running tiny with Pugna. Seven, eight, nine. They have a nine game winning streak. It's about to be 10. The last time they lost was to Secret in Star Ladder 26 days ago. Wow. They're they, owning it up. Yeah, they're, they're a pretty good team, I'd say. Yeah, they're, they're doing pretty damn well. They might be an okay team for those of you that maybe have never seen a lines before. Yeah. Here. Necro 2, Chen, Reaps, like they have more than enough to take this and it's not even like VP can contest it. Their team fight is not great. I don't know about this Axe pick, honestly, like he's blinked in and like you've talked about, he's just not been able to do much. It's been more of a hinder than it has been a helper, so. That's the problem, like you think Axe would be... Well, there's more spins, but... No way, when I you mean, have that much damage, he just doesn't have... I remember when Ice Frog took like three base armor away to Axe and really has killed him. Yeah, Axe has been nerfed into oblivion and he's trying to get something going here by just pushing the base. But while this happens, the tier three is going to be assaulted here. His own tier three tower. Alliance are looking to finish this game off and 
proceed to move on even further. It's first in his group. There's the life drain coming out. Look at the damage it does to the bear. Yeah, it's available for me, GM, too. He's close to the Radiance, but look how, like, he's the only one up in net worth. Everyone else is behind. Dyer's Chen is the lo the lowest on the line, and he's still ahead of everybody with the exception of two people on Virtus Pro. That's how you know you're having a great game. They have a 12,000 net worth advantage, which is about to be more as they take this tier 3 tower down. S4 jumps and toss Avalanche combo. Gets the Wicked Six free onto the Lil. They'll keep going on this tower. They have the Golem up ready as well. He's got his Necro 2. He's about to use it. He'll pop it up, and this push is going to go even faster. The Radiance is done, but they I don't know if they can really find anything off this Radiance, Grant. Yeah, they are... Lost two racks already. Minutes. They're about to lose a second by 16. And Ages oh. doesn't do nothing, especially that bear dies really quick if it's... Yeah, they have to come in. There's going to be the avalanche going again. The toss. They won't get the combo off. They'll do a lot of damage to FG. The cast will fly through as well. The death ward comes out. They'll find the kill. They get the savage roar away, but the melee rack's about to fall. Two more right clicks should do the job. The nether blast instead will be the one to pick it up and load it will back up now. No, they won't. S4 keeps going. There's the solo exception. They even have minus armor on it, but they just can't bring it down. The call will miss. Egypt is the one that's going to get brought in. They get off the familiar suns. S4 will take up the solo exception. He's got the ages. Avalanche will go. It will miss, but it does the job of zoning everybody out. And his second rack is now gone. And VP are hanging on by a thread in this game. And that's. That's about it. It's maybe even less than a threat, considering how this game is going for Alliance. Dear God. Yeah, and this this Pugna has an Aether Lens. Aethos. Now we have a Book 1 on the Doctor, a Book 3 on the Warlock. They're just they're going to run at you. Based. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know what they go for in terms of next items right now. Are they building anything else is the question. EGM has picked up a Book 1. I think you talked about that. There's the... I, they just have so much. They have bots now up for the Pugna, so he could be up and involved. Loda could be pretty much everywhere on the map if he needs to be. And they're going to just try to take this tier 2 tower down, Grant. And what does VP do? They they have one farmed hero in the Lone Druid, and nobody else does damage. So how do you rectify that situation? Uh, I don't know, dude. Maybe you tell me. I don't I don't. I actually have no idea. That's not a good sign for Virtus Pro. Smoke up, maybe. I mean, hopefully they don't do it under an Observer Ward. Oh, they were just having Bulldogs up top, so they might feel safe in their jungle here with just... They're just getting it thrashed. Yeah, Alliance is going to walk right in. They have great vision. They're going to find Lil and just bring him down almost instantly. Toss Avalanche on to two. Beautifully done. The Death Ward will fall. The Nether Blast gets loaded. A double kill. That was a stylish play coming out from Alliance. And, and you just see him pinging out that ward. They're like, well, they have a ward there. Too bad it <laughs> might be the end of us, but I'm counter it. And they're not going to be able to counter it with the amount of time I feel like they have left. Silent will try to take down at least one tower this game, or at least two towers. Well, actually three, because they've got the tier one and two, two. I can, I can count, guys. Don't worry. It's fine. Silent will TP back home. And here comes the push from Alliance as they get ready to go high ground. All right. I don't know, man. G's got an ogre club at the very least now, but... He cannot really do much. S4 now with the Hyperstone still has that Aegis to toss onto the tower. It's getting taken down pretty quickly. The Bear's trying to push this up with the Familiar. If the Chen Creeps are going to town, they get off the Veil. The Snowball all the way in. FNG has been caught out. G is looking for a Blinket as well. But here comes the Gold, the Upheaval, the Nether Blast, the Life Drain, and everything going on to those two heroes. They've already lost three. Bulldog will get a double kill. Looks like the GG will be called an Alliance. We've said it before, we'll say it again. They're back. Man, they are more than back there, and they're looking like the top team right now. They, they've even looked a little better than EG, Secret, Top Chinese. Yeah, they're so damn good. And this is a mode that you, you expect to lose once in a while. You expect to just not have a good draft because there's not that many heroes. But they've just actually, and, and I think the old stigma that Alliance can only play a couple of heroes, I think is gone. You look at Bulldog playing Warlock, you see Loda play, well, Loda already has a gigantic hero, but we knew that much. But th this looks amazing for Alliance, honestly, Grant. They've looked so damn good. And they just went undefeated in the group stage.